Okay, so here we are in virtual reality and VR patients, and we're gonna go over this incredibly realistic feature, the stethoscope, all right? I would say it's like nothing I've ever done before, but it's exactly like what I've done before. In reality, patient is experiencing shortness of breath and difficulty breathing. We're gonna go to an asthma call, which is perfect, you would think, for a stethoscope, correct? Well, hey there, buddy. So this guy is in respiratory distress. I'm looking at him, I can hear him breathing. Now, one of the first things that I'm gonna do as a paramedic, I'm gonna don all of my appropriate PPE and I'm gonna get in there, ask him some questions, and I'm gonna listen to his lungs. That is a must on this case. So, stethoscope, I click on stethoscope and as you can see, my remote control has a stethoscope. And I was talking to someone and teaching them how to do this in virtual reality and they were saying, okay, I've got my stethoscope and they're you know, pointing their lightsaber lasers at the patient, clicking, saying, well, how do I listen to his lungs? I said, well, how would you listen to his lungs in real life? They go, huh. And they reach out. Listen to that. Inspiratory and expiratory wheezes, my friend. And you may have noticed I can also hear his heart tones. But that's actually getting in the way of my assessment as a new paramedic. It's like, oh, great. Well, let's, I want to listen to the back of his lungs. How do I do that? I'm just going to reach around. Listen to those lung sounds. Let's go down, lower lobes. Lower lobes. And what's really amazing about this is that this gentleman has inspiratory and expiratory wheezes, but those expiratory wheezes are kind of grunting, right? Like I can hear the alveolar sacs having a hard time pushing air out. It's creating that kind of like grunting on the way out. He's working lower lobe expiratory wheeze. This guy is a perfect asthma call. So immediately, buddy, I'm gonna get you in a dual nebs nebulizer. We're gonna treat this and make you breathe, open up all those alveolar sacs, and you're gonna be breathing great, and we're gonna take you to the doctor, and you're gonna feel really good. Now, we're still in the stethoscope, but we're gonna switch out to a different patient. I'm sorry I didn't take you to the hospital today, but I wanna hear something a little bit different. What if my patient is actually not just a respiratory patient, but also valuable to listen to their chest to use the stethoscope. Okay, so I'm in a bathroom here, a common call. Oh my gosh, someone's in the bathroom. Maybe they were bearing down and, and something, that's a really big toilet. <laughs> They're bearing down and something happened and it messed with their heart. Maybe they pushed on their vagus nerve by accident. Don't push when you're going to the bathroom. All right, so I'm here. Now the first thing that I would do with this patient is I would throw him on the monitor, get him an ECG. I wanna read his, the leads. I wanna get everything going, but we're not here just to treat him for an ECG. All right, I'll put the pads on so you can see his, his chest. There you go, there's the leads, okay? And uh, you know, there's my monitor. Let's get the, the pulse going. So you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so here we go. All right, 42, that's bradycardic. Not good, my friend. Now I don't have a 12 lead. We're not gonna worry about the 12 lead right now. We're not here to diagnose your AV block that you may or may not have, right? We're here to do something else. Let's show you how the stethoscope, so he sits up for me when I select stethoscope. I'm gonna show you how this actually works listening to the heart. How you doing, my friend? I'm gonna put the stethoscope, I'm gonna make sure it's warm for you. Okay, I got lungs, lungs. Now I can hear that heart clearly. What's the first thing you notice about listening to this heart tone? Boom, boom. That is slow AF, my friend. We need to get you treated. And I can also listen to your lung sounds in the back. Seems okay, I hear some wind. I mean, look, maybe it's possible that a patient like this, maybe they have a third degree block or maybe they're, they're having a STEMI and so their, their, their cardiac monitor is freaking out and you listen to their heart tones and you hear S1 or S4 or, or some other crazy sounds that you can program into this, right? That sounds like, that doesn't sound like a normal love dub. That sounds different. What is that? That's mitral valve prolapse. What the heck? We got re regurgitation sounds? Or perhaps you have a cardiac patient and then you pull up the stethoscope and you listen in the back and then the uppers sounds pretty good, but they have some like 
light wheezes in the lower lobes. But this isn't an asthma call, but I know as a paramedic that this person's probably in heart failure, and that means they may have fluid buildup in their lungs, and that may be why they have light wheezes. But what am I treating on this call? Am I treating these light wheezes in the lower lobes, or am I gonna save your life because your pulse is 42, and you're gonna drop here in a minute? Let's see what this guy's blood pressure is, just for fun, and then we're gonna finish out this feature. All right, so let's take a blood pressure on this guy. 78 over 46. How are you even awake? So guys, that's the stethoscope. Incredibly realistic, so cool. And uh, this is how we should be treating patient, uh, this is how we should be training paramedics to treat patients in the most realistic way. Get in there, physically do the skills, get that muscle memory going. I'm gonna listen to all four lobes. Rather than just sitting at your NREMT station and saying, all right, I listen to all four lobes. Lungs clear and equal bilaterally? Yeah, of course lungs are clear and equal bilaterally. bilaterally. You're, you're not in a, car, a lung station, but you have to do the skill. And how often do we just word vomit? Lungs clear, equal bilateral, pupils pearl. Or we don't actually pull the pen light out in our skill station, we just verbally go through it. What if we could physically practice these skills over and over and over? As a student, who might be nervous to be in front of a proctor or a dozen other classmates and I could practice this at home through my computer screen or through my personal Oculus Quest or maybe the institution has VR headsets and they have issued them and I've checked out my own VR headset to get me through my ACLS and my NREMT skills stations and at home or in the classroom, in another skills classroom, I'm practicing in a private environment so I can get the muscle memory down and feel confident when I gotta do the skill in front of a proctor and in front of my classmates. That's what it's about. Improving education today, not tomorrow. I love it. Let's do one more and then we're done with this feature. SVT, okay? Again, as a paramedic, I know how to treat this. This is an algorithm. Right? Okay, you're here, you're an SVT, because that was the call, you're here for a racing heart, maybe you have a history of it, but what am I gonna do, man? I'm gonna throw you on the monitor very quickly, right? ECG, two leads, okay, bam, SVT, right? 172, man, that's gotta not be feeling very good. You're just sitting here, you were, maybe you were eating dinner, it looks like your spoon is out, right? and your heart's racing. So what am I gonna do as a paramedic, right? BLS before ALS, I'm gonna make you do vagal maneuvers, which is a feature we're gonna cover on a different video, and I'm gonna then put a line in you, give you some adenosine, six followed by a 20cc flush, 12 followed by a 20cc flush, right? We're gonna get you going. But if I do my full assessment as a competent medic, I'm gonna pull out my stethoscope and I'm gonna listen to your lung sounds. And you know what I'm gonna hear? Listen to that. I'm going to palpate your pulse with my fingers in real life, and I'm going to listen to your heart. Holy guacamole, you are running. I can double confirm. That's correct. Those leads are connected quite nicely. We're going to get a 12 lead. I'm going to give you adenosine. We're going to put the line in. Get ready, buddy. You're going to the doctor. That's what I'm talking about. That's realistic paramedic education in virtual reality. All right. We're done with this feature. I hope you guys enjoyed. See you on the next one. Thank you so much for watching another Skills Station video. Please click on the red subscribe button and then click on the bell to get notified when exclusive content drops. Comment below, let us know what you like and dislike, and I cannot wait to see you again in VR. See you on the next one. Just hanging out? Not sure if you're gonna go to the next video? Maybe click on one of these, huh? Did you hit subscribe yet? You should. We got some good stuff for you.